Hi, and welcome to lesson 15, session one. Today is the first session in unit three. We've already covered all of unit one, all of unit two. We are now on to unit three. There are five total units um, during the whole school year. And so we are almost halfway through our school year, which is super cool. So today we're going to be working on, um, less, like I said, lesson 15, session one. Um, we will be exploring multiplying a decimal by a whole number. Um, we are going to be working on uh, in our workbook um, on pages 309 through 312, and we will be exploring strategies that we can use when we are multiplying a decimal by a whole number. So go ahead and turn your uh, Ready Classroom Math workbook to page 309 so we can get started. So we are here, um, and oh, and I forgot to mention we are in um, volume two, and we are um, in the first lesson of volume two. So we have also switched uh, our math books as uh, to, from volume one to volume two. So volume two covers all of units three, four, and five, and volume one covered just units one and two. So. You know how to multiply two whole numbers. So we've done that. We did that a few um, months back. Now you will learn how to multiply a decimal by a whole number. Use what you know to try and solve the problem below. So here we go. It says, Margo has six square tiles of equal size. Each side of the tile is eight tenths of an inch long. Margo places all the tiles in a row with the sides touching as shown. How long is this row of tiles? So we have six tiles. Each of these tiles is eight tenths of an inch long. And we want to know how long it is from here, um, from this end to this end. So first of all, what is this question about? This question is about tiles of equal size. What are we trying to um, find out? What are we trying to solve? We're trying to find out how long is each row of tiles. And finally, what is the important information? We know that we have six tiles and each tile is eight tenths of a unit of an inch long. So let's go ahead and look at one way we could solve this. So um, the first way is just looking at the picture. And um, so if we're looking at this picture, we know that from here to here is eight tenths. 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 And from here to here is eight tenths. So we have six tiles. They're each eight tenths long. So um, if all else fails, our number one strategy we can use is repeated addition. So if, if you can ever use that strategy, it's actually a perfectly, totally acceptable strategy to use, and it might be the way for you to go. So if we look here and we add 8 tenths, we're going to add it 6 times because we have 6 tiles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if we're going to add them each, we can see, remember when we add using decimals, and this is only when we add and subtract using decimals, our decimal comes straight down. It's gonna be a little bit different as we move on over the next couple of days um, with multiplying decimals. But for now, since we are adding decimals, the decimal just comes straight down. Then we're going to go ahead and count eight, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Well, I happen to know that six times eight is 48. So I'm gonna put my eight down below and carry my four or my 40 up top. Then I'm gonna add my four plus all of my zeros and get a answer of four and eight tenths. So I can see here that I have, um, I have uh, eight tenths six times is the same as four and eight tenths. Another strategy I can do is I can use, I can think of, um, if I'm multiplying eight tenths, and I can multiply it times six. 
because what I'm doing is up here the same exact thing. What is eight tenths times six? So six times eight is 48. And then I have six times eight is 48. Then I can see here that I'm multiplying a whole number by a tenth. So when I multiply a whole number times a tenth, then I have to look at where my decimal goes. So for example, um, I can see that I have my decimal and then I have one digit after the, my decimal. So that means in my answer, I need to have one digit after my decimal. So when you look at how many digits come after your decimal, that's how many digits are going to come after your decimal in your answer as well. So these are two different ways you could have gotten to the correct answer. Let's go ahead and go to page 310. On page 310, it says, explain how you found the length of row, the row of tiles. So the first strategy we used was you can add the length of each of the eight, uh, each tile, which is eight tenths. We could do that six times. So eight tenths plus eight tenths plus eight tenths and so on. Six times equals four and eight tenths. Now looking ahead, it says you can find the length of a row of tiles through repeated addition or a multiplication of a decimal by a whole number. Look for the patterns in the factors and products. Look um, for patterns in the factors and products when multiplying with the whole numbers and decimals shown below. Use the, pro the models to write the products. So, two times three. So we have two groups. That's where the two comes from. And in each group, there are three. That's where the three comes from. So if we were to add each whole number all together, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. So two times three is six or six holes. Now, when we multiply two holes times three tenths, that means we have a red group and a blue group. We have two groups. That's where the two comes from. So again, two groups, two groups. And then each group has three tenths. So when you see this multiplication sign, it means the word of. So whenever you see, and when you're multiplying with decimals and you see the word, the multiplication sign, that means of. So in this case, we have two groups of three two groups of three. Here, we have two groups of three tenths. So here you can see we have one, two, three tenths, one, two, three tenths, one, two, three tenths, one, two, three tenths. So two holes times three tenths equals one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. And then finally, we have two groups of three hundredths. So we have one group of three hundredths, two groups of three hundredths. All together, how many hundredths do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, not six tenths again. We have six hundredths. My bad. So, two times three is six holes. Two holes times three holes. Two holes times three tenths is six tenths. Two holes times three hundredths is six hundredths. Interesting. Now, what I want you to do right now is what patterns do you see in the factors and products in the equations? How are these patterns reflected in the models? So I want you to tell me what do you notice about each of these equations and each of these models? Go ahead and pause the video and write down what you notice. When you're ready, come back and then um, we will go to the next page. All right, 
Now we're on page 311. This is our graphic organizer. It's a little bit different than the last few times that we've had because it's um, we're doing um, a vocabulary uh, graphic organizer as opposed to doing um, like the spider that we normally, the um, web uh, graphic organizer that we normally have. Now here, we're thinking about three vocabulary words, partial product, product, and factor. So first, we're going to look at partial product. In my own words, what is a partial product? A partial product is part of the answer in a multiplication problem. So if we were using the partial product method to multiply 123 times 4, we would multiply first 4 times 3, then we would multiply 4 times 20, and then finally we would multiply 4 times 100. Now, each of these three products here are called partial products because they're each part of the answer. When we add those partial products together, we get our final product. So what is the product? The product is the result or the answer of a multiplication, of mul doing a multiplication problem. So if we had five holes and we multiplied it times one tenth, we, our product would be five tenths because we multiplied five times one tenth equals five tenths. A factor in multiplication is a number that is multiplied. So seven times one one hundredth equals seven hundredths. Seven and one one hundredth are both of our factors. And then our product is the answer or the total that we get. Now you're going to go ahead and finish numbers two, three, and four on your own. And then, as always, if you have any questions, you can always email your teacher. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.